chance to Bristol City. Vardy yeah. in! <laughs> oh, he's done it. Has well got the finish. Here goes Bell. It's a brilliant run from Sam Bell all the way! Ruthless stuff for Bristol City. So, it's across the bridge we go for the iconic seven-side derby. Nigel Pearson's squad have had to quickly switch their attentions back to the Skybet Championship following their midweek exit from the Emirates FA Cup at the hands of Manchester City. Some would argue it's the perfect fixture to follow Tuesday's loss to the Citizens as the Robins set their sights on completing the double over the Bluebirds for the second successive season. Although City's 12-game unbeaten run may have come to an end, the opportunity to go 10 unbeaten in the league at the Cardiff City Stadium is in prospect. Recent form has seen the Reds rise as high as 13th in the league standings and each fixture provides the squad with a new opportunity to chip away at the current 10-point buffer that stands between themselves and a coveted playoff place. Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Robins TV live from Ashton Gate. I'm joined in the studio today by Robins TV regular Ali Hines, development phase coach at Bristol City. Welcome. Thank you. Nice new shirt. Yep, just what, fits perfectly. What size is it? Uh, large. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's first of all box off Tuesday night. A great showing. Yeah, great. Uh, it was fantastic. The atmosphere, the crowd was superb. Um, you know, and we, and I think we put a really good account of the of the club and the players performed really well. So, yeah, it was a great spectacle. Um, unfortunately, we lost, but it was a it was a real good day. Let's take a moment to. Um, speak about Alex Scott, who's been hailed as a, a hero at the moment. Mm. Um, however, controversial statement. Do you think it's uh, Matty James and Joe Williams perhaps making him look a bit better? Uh, I think it's, you know, the squad's blended really well. They're playing for each other. You know, Scott, he, he has some fantastic qualities. He can unlock teams and, and score goals and breaks play up. But uh, the chemistry of the midfield at the moment is, is really, really strong. So we're seeing good performance of the whole midfield and there's yeah. also midfielders aren't in the squad as well. So back to the Scotty comment, he, he's a top, top player and hopefully he's with us for a long time. Politician, this guy. <laughs> Love him. <laughs> um, great performance on Tuesday night. Great occasion, mm. apart from the guy doing the subs. Uh, but we must turn our attention now back to the league. Mm. Playoffs possible? Yeah, I think so. I'd hope so. Um, I think the club would, would, you know, we're an ambitious club and we want to achieve that, those playoffs. Um, but there's lots of twists and turns in the championship, as we've seen before. Um, and I think it's a real good game to, to bounce back onto as a seven-side derby. Uh, talking about today, it really is the one that the boys can get up for, isn't it? It's just mm. such an occasion. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. That's what we want to roll into. And if we can take the, the same style of play and the same intensity that we saw on Tuesday night against Man City, you know, it should be in for a really good game today. And, and like we said, can we get the double over them this season like we did last season? Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Ali is with us all afternoon at this slightly uh, earlier time. It's, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm just slightly out of sort. I've not had time for a full breakfast yet. <laughs> So maybe we can sort that out a little bit later on. Right, team news time now. And uh, the latest is in from the Cardiff City Stadium with all the details as ever. Here's Toby Osborne. Thank you, Downsy. Well, it was a 2-0 defeat to the Canaries last weekend on the road. And Lamucci makes two changes today. In comes former Liverpool man Shea Ojo and Sorry Kabar as well. Former Bristol City man Callum O'Dowder and Marlon Romeo drop down to the bench. Remains Sawyer, uh, remains at the heart of a midfield, a man who is now flourishing under Samucci's leadership since he arrived at the club. Connor Wickham leads the attack today. He had his contract terminated with Forest Green Rovers having scored nine in 20 for them. He's yet to bag his first Cardiff City goal. The Bluebirds played a back five last week, but Ojo's inclusion might suggest a more attacking look today. And former Reading man Rinamotta drops down to the bench. 
Nigel Pearson names an unchanged side from the victory last weekend over Hull. Wells, his penalty the difference, but not enough to force him into the starting 11. It means Mehmeti, Sykes and Bell start as a front three. How long before Mehmeti turns in that silkiness into goals? Scott James and Williams make a midfield three that it's really coming into its own and affording Scott the freedom to be more expressive. Callas was the pick of the match against Man City. He remains alongside Viner, Tanner and and Pring, the latter many suggesting could be a contender for player of the season so far. Omar Taylor-Clark on the bench again, obviously impressing in training alongside such experience in Andy Vyman, Naki Wells and Harry Cornick as well. So an op optimistic Nigel Pearson caught up with Robins TV earlier on ahead of this one. Nigel, straight back into Skybet Championship action this weekend. Seven-side derby, a great occasion and hopefully a good opportunity for the players to, to get back to winning ways. Yeah, we just want to uh, make sure our form in the league continues. Simple as that. We've, we've worked hard to, to try and impact um, our progression up the, up, up the league table. It's been very, very tough to do that. But, um, you know, we're in touching distance of quite a few sides now above us. So... Uh, yeah, it's just important for us to to try and win the game just on its own merits, really. I mean, it's a it's a derby, so derbies are always games that you want to do well in, um, and there's an expectation from our fan base for us to play well, and and we fully accept that and want to do that ourselves. So, yeah, uh, there are always big days. It's important that we go and perform. Anas Mehmeti comes back into the starting lineup. Yeah. We know he's got a bit of stardust about him. Sam Bell through the middle. I can imagine you're going to want him to really test and stretch that back line today. Yeah, very important. It, it, it's important that our front players are uh, show lots of energy and, and um, a real tough uh, work rate for us today. That that gives us the spark. I mean, we've been we've been pretty solid um, of late. It's important that we remain very very solid, but we still have to cause them problems and, and uh, yeah we've got lots of options on the bench as well. Cardiff are really scrapping for every point at the moment so it's, it'll be a tough test here today. Always it look whatever's happening in the league when you get derby days form is is something that's probably not as important or doesn't doesn't appear to be you know there's always a uh, added spice with um, local derbies and and players you know have to have to be able to perform under pressure that's what it's about and just over your shoulder in the corner there'll be 3,000 fans here yeah. today they're going to make quite a noise and really get behind the group yes um, but it's important for us keep saying it we've got to give them something to to get behind and hopefully um, you know that they continue to see their team playing with a lot of passion and a lot of commitment that's what we always need best of luck today cheers thanks uh, Nigel Pearson chatting to George West there at the Cardiff City Stadium. So an unchanged squad since last Saturday, mm -hmm. an air of confidence then? Yeah, definitely. I think it's uh, business as usual with the settled team that they've got at the moment. Some fantastic players on the bench as well to come on and impact the game later on. But it's, uh, you know, I think the team's used to the shape now, the way we play. So it's an exciting day ahead. Toby mentioned it then in his piece, but... Uh, Omar Taylor-Clark being on the bench really does mean that something's going on in training to make Nigel Pearson keep picking it. Yeah, I think, uh, listen, Omar is a, he's a fantastic midfielder. Uh, he breaks the play up really well. He's really creative with his forward passing. And he's really, you know, the, the showing trust from the management and the staff to, to keep him involved within the squad, which is great. And uh, You know, we saw him come on against Man City the other day and I think he had a little tussle with De Bruyne. And he's just, he takes everything in his stride and, and hopefully he can progress to becoming a starter eventually. So what do we have to do today to bring all three points back over the bridge? I think, as we heard the, the manager just say, it's going to be a gritty, scrappy affair at times. But can we can we manage that battle that we need to do, of course, in a seven-side derby? That's going to happen. But then look after the ball and, you know, create goal-scoring chances like we have been and more of the same. OK, Ali, for now, thank you very much. You. Now, Bristol City penalties are like buses. None for ages and then two come along at once. Let's relive the second as we take a look back at the highlights of our clash against Hull last weekend here at Ashton Gate. Steve Nant with 12. Ashton Gate hopeful. After a pick-up in form, it's fair to say. It's the two cities collide. An opportunity for central 
And like a piece of chewing gum, that ball just kept sticking. It was a hefty with it. And ultimately Sykes secures the set piece. In the corner, good save by the goalkeeper in fairness. Stood his ground well. I've seen you and Pearson renewing love, I'm sure. Oh, what a turn that is. And it's once again. They're just struggling to drag him down. Eventually, Doherty hammers that one clear. But it's, uh, Bristol City and the Robins who are making most of the early running here. Alex Scott, the promising youngster, has it, keeps it, it opens up. They're still not getting this shot away here, Bristol City. And eventually, it could fall down. A shot does go over the bar. Well, they were taking their time to manufacture that chance. But manufacture it, they did. Traversing from one side to the other, the Robins. Half clear. And through a sea of bodies, ultimately, the shot's deflected and goes over. Mimrosini is then just trying to feel the way into this one. First or second round of the bout. They're struggling to find the jab. And it's Bristol City who are behind Haymakers thus far. The opener looks inevitable, a save. But if you're Nigel Pearson or a Bristol City fan here, surely you can taste the goal coming. Not great from a defensive and goalkeeping point of view. And again, Anis Mermetti. Remember a game screaming out for a goal, it's this one. Atta James for Bristol City, getting a attack going once more. So again, they're standing off, and that's a for a handball, and the referee gives it. Bristol City have a penalty. Something that's been said in the last seven days, but before then, they've got 468 without one. They're getting two in a week here. The cross comes in, the handball is from Cyrus Christie, and I don't think he can have too many complaints, to be honest. He, he goes to put his hands behind his back, and then he pulls them out. Becky Wells, superstitious. Scored one. Now he's scored two. Two and two for Naki Wells, and they're both penalties. Bristol City begrudging for months. No penalty. They get two and two, and they score two and two. Naki Wells with it. And they are quite understandably overjoyed at Ashton Gate. Gambled. Saw the goalkeeper had gone, waited late there. The former Bradford man. What a lovely jig, Nigel. Somebody get him a TikTok account. <laughs> Do you know, he was doing that all game for some reason. Must be some sort of... You know, in fact, Ali might, uh, might know. Do we know why he was doing that? Because he was doing it literally all through the game. I was just trying to stay warm, I think. Okay. <laughs> I guess so. Very good. Uh, all right, you're watching Robins TV. Now still to come, more expert chat in the studio from Ali. We catch up with Cal Naismith on his journey to Ashton Gate. And, of course, all the action from the Cardiff City Stadium. We'll see you after the break. So we've got all this outdoor space here and it's perfect for companies to come in, whether they're small or large. So we cater for maybe a team of 12 or a team of 800. They can come here, have a really positive experience and be rewarded for all their hard work in the office or whatever industry they're from. As we've got such a big company, a lot of us don't see each other. Being able for the first time to get everyone out together in one place doing an activity together was great for team bonding and boosting that morale. We can um, hone in on specific skills such as communication, leadership, teamwork, resilience. Here we've got a 400 metre military assault course, which is fantastic for team building. If you want a morale booster, this is the place to come.
Welcome back to Robins TV. It's Downsy here with Ali Hines. More chat from Ali in just a moment. But first of all, Cal Alexander Naismith, born in Glasgow in 1992 and now resident in BS3. Robins TV reporter Dan White caught up with him on his journey to Ashton Gate. Cal, welcome to Robins TV. First time we've spoken, halfway through your first season at Ashton Gate. How have you found things so far? I've found it, um, I found it, it's been tough, it's been tough because there's so many different emotions and you're on top of the world when you first join the club and it's it's great and then the season starts and there's the excitement of starting the new season, is the excitement of what we're building on, we had a very good pre-season and then we started really well and we were playing really well, performing great in, in matches and then there was a couple of errors for myself and there was a couple of individual f mistakes that led to potentially not getting the points on the board that we should have and now it's kind of put us in a position halfway where if I'm completely honest sitting here I'm not happy with where we are sat um, so for that for that point of view it's like it's a little bit disappointment when you look at it as a whole but there's there's lots of good stuff in there there's the excitement obviously joining the club of being at this great club of getting to come in here and train and work every day and working with the manager and the players and but then when we're honest and sit and look as footballers you're judged off results so the results haven't went as well as we'd hoped but lucky enough for us there's still a lot of time to put that right so it's kind of looking towards that now well said Right, we're going to track your uh, your career journey so far. So the best best place to start is the beginning. Yeah. Born in Glasgow, you started at Rangers. Were you and your family always in the blue half of Glasgow? Yes, we were. Well, I think my mum. Uh, to be fair, I never came from a big football family. Uh, I think my uncle played football. He played for Hibs when he was young. But apart from that, there was no one else in the family that really played football. I would say like the majority of my cousins and stuff were. Rangers fans, um, majority of my family, my my granda, he, he was fair place Postal Park, so it was right next to Partick Thistle, a club that I went on loan to um, later on in my career, but they, he, he was a fan of them, so no, no one was really a massive Rangers fan, but I was a Rangers fan as a kid, and so it was obviously special to come through there and then end up playing for them. Yeah, you, you did play for them though at a time of, sort of great trouble for the club, when they were demoted to yeah. the bottom tier of Scottish football, so what was that experience like being at a club that almost has to start again. It was, yeah, it was tough. Um, not from a, I remember all the stuff in the news and it was affecting people's wages and like, we were young but we had to take a small cut but it never really affected us. We weren't on a lot of money at the time, the young lads. And But yeah, it was just a great opportunity for us. It was like the next season, all the players left and then we were, we were left there and we were in the first team changing room. We were getting an opportunity at a massive club and we were turning up to Ibrooks and there was 40,000 fans in there so it kind of, when I look back at it now, was it the best thing for me? Uh, probably not, it was an amazing experience but if I had come up the graduate route into a first team and kind of learned the ropes and learned how you should behave and act as a first team member at a massive club like Rangers instead of just being chucked in a changing room with loads of young lads and but that's the way it was, it was a good experience, it made me grow up fast and um, obviously playing in front of 40,000 and it it wasn't always going well. The, the Rangers fans were used to seeing top, top players, Gascoigns and McCoys, and even in recent years, some top, top players. And then we went down to third division, they were seeing boys like myself who probably wasn't ready to be playing and other young lads. So it, it was tough at times, but a good experience. And you can catch the second part of our chat with Cal Naismith next Tuesday before our game with Huddersfield. Join us from 7.15 right here on Robins TV, Facebook and YouTube for that one. Uh, right, so today it's obviously a massive game. 3,000 City mm. fans all heading over the bridge. Cardiff actually not in great form at the moment, only just above the relegation zone. They've not won at home since November, which gives us a great opportunity, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's a tough game, no matter where they are in the league. Um, you know, the fans, both sets of fans are always up for this. Both sets of players are up for this as well. You know, even through the academy under-21s, down to the under-9s, when we play Cardiff, it is a, it's a feisty encounter. Mm. And hopefully today we can let the football do the talking, which would be great. But obviously we want to win and get the three points. Callum O'Dowd on the bench. Is it weird when you know we come up against and see our old friends? <laughs> it is. It is. It is strange when you see him. And when Cal was here, he was a great professional. Great person as well, really good footballer. Um, but no, it'd be good to keep him on the bench today because he has got that pace that could cause us problems. <laughs> good stuff. All right, Ali, thanks very much. Right, so 
Cardiff away. What a fixture. Bristol City are looking to complete the double-double against Cardiff City this afternoon. So let's take a look back at our last trip over the bridge and Wyman's take on a Scott Murray Classic. Prodded through. Could this be the opening card if we're looking for? Last gasp challenge there. Great tackle. What a fantastic challenge from Great Nathan tackle. Baker. Big collision between him and Dan Bentley. Bristol City let off the hook. Great ball. What a ball that is in towards Vyman again. One. Takes a touch, yes. finds the finish, and he wheels away. Bristol City strike first in the seven-side derby, and it's Andy Vyman with his third of the season. And he sends the away end into delirium. It's a great run. He's come short and he's just spun and behind. That's exactly what you need to do against defenders like Flint. He's not mobile. He's coming behind, he's spun him. Brilliant play. His touch actually went the best. What a finish, though. That's where he's best. That's where he's best. And he matches Scott Murray's famous celebration from Ninian Park all those years ago. Aidan Flint Ooh. sends it back into the danger area. It's Kiefer Moore oh. cleared off the line. Kingy, brilliant. Andy King, right place, right time. And Dan Bentley does the rest. That's brilliant. That's match winner. That's literally as good as a goal. Look at that, brilliant. Wave after wave of attack now as Pack slides it through to Moore. Awkward one for Bentley, cleared oh. off the line. Back in off the goalkeeper. Heartbreak for Bristol City as the home side draw level. It will go down as an own goal. Players waiting, only as far as Masengo, a few cries of handball, but a clever back heel from him, back in from Semenyo. What yes. a shot! And it's Andy Vyman at the double! Bristol City lead the seven-side derby! A stunning strike from Andy Vyman, fitting of such an occasion, and Bristol City are conquering the Welsh capital. What a finish. Seems like he goes quiet in the game for 10, 15 minutes and then he just comes up with something like that. Brilliant. What an introduction as well from Antoine Semenyo. A fine strike leading up to this. He provides the assist. And it doesn't get much better than that. I mean, that Scott Murray celebration, I mean, just iconic. It's never going to end, is it? It would just be repeated over the years. No, and he's been doing it all weekend around a training ground as really? well. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, To see, you know, co confidence is such an important thing in any sport, but especially in football. The unbeaten run in the league, to be able to now extend that and actually just being where we are yeah. just makes everything easier, doesn't it? Yeah, momentum's a massive thing in football. And like you said, we're unbeaten in 10 in the league, I believe. So we need to keep that going. We want to keep it going. Of course we do. Um, but let's, let's do it in the right way like we have been doing. So it'll be interesting to see today. And from your sort of insight at the, the HPC from training, who should we be keeping an eye on today? He's looking good. Mameti coming back into the team, he, he excites us, he excites the fans. So it would be great to see him again. But I think there's a whole whole start in 11, even the, even the boys on the bench as well. It's, it's an exciting time and, and I hopefully we can see some goals going in and keep a clean sheet. Right. Score prediction very quickly. 2-0. Oh, he's confident. Yeah. 2-0 straight in there, like a whippet. Uh, very good. Time to say goodbye to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube now. You can buy your Robins TV pass at bcfc.co.uk to see all of the action from the Cardiff City Stadium or follow all of the coverage on the club's social media channels.